and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to show you a pro request from one of my lovely followers, which was Stephanie this time. And she requested me to make a pour with a black and gold and add a fleur de lis onto it. So I'm going to show you how I made it and let's discuss the end result in the very end. So I hope you have fun watching and see you later. Of course I want to make my life as easy as humanly possible and so I searched for the design of the fleur de lis that I wanted to have here and was just about to prepare a stencil. Therefore I used a very thin kind of paper, grabbed a graphite pencil and just draw the outlines on the paper. This is quite easy and you can flip it around and bring your drawn outlines to your stencil paper and this is just some kind of cardboard that I used. Once the outlines are transcripted there, just use the cutting knife and yeah, just cut the outlines. And so I got a stencil and a negative form of it. There is of course no need to use a stencil if you like to freehand everything or draw it each time on each of the canvases that you are going to create. Feel free to do so, I just wanted to save some time and therefore made the stencil. If you only plan to do one project and you want to freehand it, there is nothing bad about it. It's probably even better than using a stencil. But in this case here I wanted to have it looking exactly the same on each one of them. So this seemed to be the most reasonable idea to do for me. Once the initial steps were done, it was time to prepare my canvases. Meaning just putting some pinboard pins on the underside of the canvas, just to have them elevated and all the drip of paint can really drip off. <laughs> and then it was about the color mixing. I knew the color palette that I'm going to need because it was the requested one, which was a gold and a black. But I thought only the gold and the black might not really show that good. Because the black is really dark and the gold is not drying completely opaque. So I decided to add a little bit of my phthalo blue into it and some bits of white. So I started mixing my colors. I used my Artina acrylics, some flow tools, some water and some drops of silicone. As you all know the recipe. <laughs> and once this was done I just started the pours. It was nothing really fancy. For the first two attempts I left my colors without the silicone just to create some kind of marble effect in the end and not have cells or not as many cells after all. And for the last two I tried to add silicone into it and made the same technique pours, just a dirty pour, but I torched it afterwards to receive some cells. It went better than I expected and I got more cells than I initially thought. And for the time being I was really fine with it. I just wanted to see how it looks when tried, if it was too, yeah, too busy or if it was disturbing in the overall look. So let's see what, what happens when it's dry. As those pores were pretty small, it's only 20 by 20 cm, it did not really take that long to dry. I think it was until the next morning, so about 10 hours or so. I wanted to have it everything completely dried, not much anything afterwards. <laughs> but anyways, I just had to figure out in which position I want to yeah, add the fleur de lis in the very end. Of course it was meant to be in the center, but as these are square canvases you can yeah, tilt them in any direction. So I just had a look which direction I like it the most. Then I used my techniques that I wanted to show you and which I wanted to test myself of course. For the very first technique it was I think the most simple one. I just used the negative form of the stencil and used my Mika gold flakes. Applied the stencil on my canvas and yeah, apply the Mika flakes over it. Just make sure that you press the stencil onto your canvas thoroughly so that nothing of the Mika flakes or the paint that you're going to use is going to flow underneath of the stencil. If it does, you can correct it afterwards, but the lesser paint flows under it, the easier it gets in the very end. So this is just applying everything on the negative form of the stencil. I used one of my smallest pellet knives and just applied it onto it. Once this was done, I carefully removed my stencil and I had the fleur de lis on my artwork. And it looked right already. This stuff looks some kind of brownish matte once it's wet. It's just a binding medium that combines the flakes and once this is going to dry, everything gets clear and shiny and the gold really looks like gold. And as this technique worked super great, I decided to use it for the second canvas as well. But for this one I did not use the Mika flakes. Here I used my crackling gold paint, which really is an awesome paint. I made a kind of thick amount onto it. So the thing with this paint is, the thinner the layer is that you're going to create, the more cracks you're going to have. 
and I did not want to have it cracked too much, so I applied a thicker coat of the paint and thought this might crack fewer but larger cracks, which really happened in the end, which was great. So this was the reason why I applied a thicker coat. If you want to have many small cracks, just use a thinner coat of the paint. And there is nothing that you have to do with the paint to create these cracks, it just does it naturally once it's drying. So you just have to wait and see what, what it makes. The only negative of the crackling gold paint is that the gold is not really looking that gold. It looks like a dirty old gold, so like there is some oxidation going on already. So I just grabbed a, a lighter gold color and applied it over it, just to have it more shiny in the very end. As for the third technique, I wanted to try something which I did before on larger paintings just to cover up the outlines. And I wasn't really sure if this is going to work that great for this project, but I wanted to see if it works and if it works you have something that you can do yourself. And this was using masking fluid. If you do not know what masking fluid is, it is usually used for yeah, liquid paintings. So not like acrylic pouring, but more like watercolor. So this is some kind of liquid that you can apply to your paper. It dries quite quickly and is a gum-like texture in the very end and you can lift it off and remove it from the artwork afterwards. So if there is an area that you want to protect from the watercolor, you can just apply it there and make your painting with the watercolor or color in general. And then you can peel it off and the area underneath is still paper white. If you use oil paints or acrylic paints, you should be careful to remove the masking fluid a bit quicker. Because when watercolor dries, there is not so much of a layer happening to the color. But acrylic paints or oil paints create a layer which is going to be bound together. And if you remove the masking fluid too late when everything is dried, you risk to rip off some of the paints where you did not want to remove it or your masking fluid is just torn apart and it's hard to remove it anyways. That just as a small side note. So here I made the outlines of the fleur de lis onto my artwork again, made a small hole in a thin kind of paper and put it over it. And then you just use yeah, a brush or some kind of brush and apply the masking fluid onto your artwork. I tried to cover all the connecting areas from the paper to the canvas so that none of the paint can flow underwards in the very end. You can actually use as many layers as you want. Don't use too little because otherwise it doesn't have the cohesion to stick together and you cannot really remove it as great as you like. So I usually use two or three layers depending on the size of the artwork. As this had to dry for a bit I continued with the third version and as this masking fluid version was really time consuming, so nothing I would recommend if you have other solutions. I used method number one again, 43rd canvas. And there I went a bit crazy with the colors and just used all of the colors that I've used before. So my crackling gold, my Mika paints, my crackling red, and applied it all at once. Which I did not know if it was a good idea in the end, and it's up to you to decide of course. But I really was not sure about the background anyways, because this tried quite well, energetic. <laughs> so there is much happening on this artwork and it looks a bit disturbing in regards of something applied over it. We, we will see. Just let me know what you think in the very end. But coming for my masking fluid version, here I wanted to try a regular dirty pour. So I just used the gold and white paint that I already had mixed and put it onto it, hoped for the best and removed the paper, which was in a way glued together with the masking fluid. So everything was torn apart at once. Everything looked quite nice in the very end, but I just realized it was too much of the paint. So the paint was flowing around a bit. I had to correct things on the go when it was drying every now and then to get back my shape of the fleur -de which was a bit time consuming as well. It worked pretty easy of course, but yeah, it was more time consuming than all the other canvases altogether. So it's not my preferred version after all. It looked kind of nice, but compared to the other kind of paints, it also looked a bit flat because it was just acrylic paint onto it. So there was no structure and I really liked the effect of the structure that it had. But after all, it was really fun to do. I had a great time with it. I figured out that it's better to have a more muted background to make your embellishment to, to stand more out, which will look cooler in the very end instead of having a very busy background because this in a way distracts from your embellishment. 
So thank you again for your quest. It was really fun to make. If you want to see something that you have on your mind and want me to try out, just let me know in the comments as usual. Here do now I have a list of things that are requested from my followers that I put down there and yeah, work from it every now and then when I have some time in between. And now let's discuss the end results which I filmed live again. So here we are again. You've seen me made those. What do you think of it? This is the this, this is the first one. It's varnished as you've seen. And probably one of the two of my favorites. I really love how this one turned out. I like the smooth background. And I also love the effect that the cracking paint created on the fleur de lis. So what do you think? Second one, which is also one of my favorites from this series, is this one. I also love the background and I love this Mika Gold Flake paint. I really like the effect. I like that it's really gold looking and it's shiny. <laughs> Third from it was this one, which was actually a real pour onto it, which looks quite nice, but it's, on my, it's my third favorite one, I guess. And last but not least is this one where I combined, well, most of the effects in this one. I like the fleur de lis though. It looks a bit old and rusty and used, so a vintage look perhaps. But I would say the background is not my really favorite. Well, I think the background is not calm enough for the entire look of the piece. But still, it's kind of pretty, isn't it? I think I still like it. Anyways, I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed watching and Stephanie, I hope you are satisfied with the results that I got. If you try this on your own, please make sure to tag me on Instagram or Facebook or let me know wherever you have posted, just yeah, that I can see it and have a look. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and even better subscribe to my channel to not miss out any of my coming videos. And of course, also have a look at all the videos that I already uploaded here. As usual, all the products that I'm using are listed below in the video description. And other than that, I wish you a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>